Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. San Antonio and South Texas took a soaking tonight. There were also some strong winds that blew through our cameras, catching the moments those storms rolled in. You see our cameras start to shake before the view of downtown begins to disappear. Yeah, our cameras weren't the only ones watching the weather. Our viewers also captured images of their own. A video sent to us by Carissa Hernandez shows winds blowing so hard. Look at this. A traffic light is knocked wow. down. Carissa says this video was taken near Lackland at West Military Drive and Highway 90. The traffic signals sway for a bit before one eventually flies off the wire that it's hanging from. Also in the Lackland area, the De La Garza Sanchez family sent in this video. The strong gusts basically overturning a pool. That's what's left of the pool after the winds picked it up, turned it over. The weather system seemed to develop right as our 6 o'clock newscast was ending. We've been following the developments, which included some damaging severe weather in our viewing area. Meteorologist Adam Caskey joins us in the studio with the very latest. Adam? Yeah, and the severe threat is gone for San Antonio. That's the nice thing. The active weather, the real uh, potentially damaging weather is out of town. We have some showers, though. We'll get to those in a minute. I want to take a look at the activity that we have out there where there is still some potential for some strong thunderstorms, and that's far east of San Antonio, especially as you get closer to Houston. Now, currently, we don't have any active warnings for our viewing area, Lavaca County, Hallettsville, uh, you get into Shiner area as well. Some heavy rain, lightning and thunder, some wind gusts, maybe 40, 45 miles per hour. But that's not considered severe damaging and maybe pea size hail. Same goes for down into Cuero. Then you look farther to the west and we do have a little bit of rain moving through town. We've got some heavy downpours, a little bit of lightning associated with some of this, but a few of these showers are stacked up and ready to move through San Antonio for the next couple of hours. So we'll still have some rain, but the threat for severe weather is past us. And actually the sky is going to be clearing on out after midnight. We'll talk more about how much rain fell and where and what you can expect through the weekend coming up in a few minutes, Steve. You know, Adam, I was watching your coverage from earlier, you and Justin and Katie, and some of those trans guide cameras that we showed when the storms were coming through. Wow. And earlier, Via sent out a tweet about several routes being detoured. They're also updating those routes on their website, viainfo.net. Some of those routes in the medical center area were impacted by the weather, including Route 602. They didn't have service on Dreamland between Vance Jackson and Lock Hill Selma because of the storm. And here's a look at the roadways right now, especially Highway 90 and military. I remember seeing that on the trans guide and it was just coming down in sheets. You can see it is still wet out there, but nothing like we saw earlier. And here's a look at the outage map on CPS Energy's website. You can find the number of current outages and customers affected. It's on the left hand screen right now. 175 outages, 13,079 total customers affected 840,000. You can see the total that are served, but just over 13,000 outages customers affected right now. Well, two people made it safely af safely out of their home after it was struck by lightning. It happened on Dolent Road on near Nacogdoches in 1604. The San Antonio Fire Department says they had to open up the roof of the two story house to make sure the fire was completely out. It caused an estimated $25,000 in damage. And new on the night beat, a man linked to law enforcement arrested here at home after a tip several states away. Investigators in Minnesota say they caught him in a sting operation online. 38 year old David Ray Noble is charged with online solicitation of a minor. According to an affidavit, a detective in Minnesota posed as a 15 year old girl and chatted with Noble, who identified himself as a police officer. Investigators say he was later found with a valid T. Cole license in San Antonio. Antonio as a police officer, but it's not clear what department he was with at the time. The affidavit goes on to say Noble gave out his phone number to the girl he believed he was talking to, and that helped police track him down. The police say she used a lottery ticket to pay for a car. Tonight, that woman in jail suspected of passing off fake winning lottery tickets and dodging investigators for years. The night team's Patty Santos explains the owner of a Southside car dealership near 410 and Roosevelt helped police track the suspect down. They ended up telling me they had a lottery ticket. They couldn't cash it. Something in his gut tried to warn him. I just wanted to be better safe than sorry. So 
But I did take a picture of them. But Fernando Tobar says he still took a lottery ticket as a car payment from Margarita Escobar and her boyfriend. So I took the ticket as like a cashier's check. Oh, well, no big deal. I'll go cash it the next morning. He even checked the ticket online himself. When I scanned it on my phone and I downloaded the app, it still came out as a winning ticket. You would think, wow, well, they can't beat the system. But the next day when he tried to claim the $5,000 winning scratch off ticket, alarms went off. They told me that they were going to have to investigate it because something wasn't coming out right on it. It turned out the ticket was rigged and Texas Lottery Commission investigators had been looking for Escobar since 2017 for passing off fake winning tickets. Her arrest affidavit says the ticket in this case had been stolen from a convenience store in September. When Escobar used her ID to buy the car from Tobar, investigators were finally able to put a name to their suspect. They were good at it. He says it happened about six months ago and he finally got his car back last month. Now now he's just trying to find humor in the story. <laughs> yeah, they got me on that one. <laughs> At least you're laughing about it. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, <laughs> life is good. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Tonight, Margarita Escobar is in jail facing a felony charge of theft and false transfer of claims. Her bond is set at more than $5,000. No word on the arrest of her alleged accomplice. The Converse police chief stepping down from his role, Fidel Villegas, submitted his resignation this week. He's been with the city since April of 2016. The city manager confirmed his last day on the force will be January 17th. Assistant Chief Pam Hunt will then serve as interim chief as the search to fill Villegas' replacement, fill his job rather, gets underway. The man accused of killing a San Antonio police detective outside police headquarters is set for trial this spring. According to a scheduling order released this week, Otis McCain's trial would begin on April 27th. McCain is facing capital murder charges in the execution style slaying of Detective Benjamin Marconi in 2017. The district attorney is seeking the death penalty in the McCain case. That means a series of pre-trial hearings are expected to begin in two weeks. They'll be followed by a lengthy jury selection process. Because the state is seeking the death penalty, each prospective juror is interviewed individually based on questionnaires they've completed. Cameras caught it all. What looks like a normal visit to a fast food restaurant turns terrifying. A passenger in the green SUV pulls up to a McDonald's in Houston, dives headfirst into the drive through window. Houston police say he is armed with a gun and once inside he chases a woman working at the restaurant around the kitchen. She ends up hiding in a back room where the suspect can't find her. Cameras show the gunman then heads back out through the drive through window, jumps back into the back seat of the green SUV. It is not clear if the suspects were trying to rob the McDonald's or trying to target someone inside. Here at home, it's one of the most well-known misconduct cases by a San Antonio police officer. And the issue was not a shooting or brutality, but a sandwich. Matthew Luckhurst was on SA, an SAPD bike officer who was regularly tasked with clearing out the homeless from public and private spaces downtown. Man, it smells like pee out here. How are you going to hang out here? But in 2016, his fellow officers reported him for making a sandwich out of dog excrement and leaving it next, next to a sleeping homeless man. And even though he was fired for it, he won his job back through appeal. Hear about this controversial incident this Sunday night at 9 in a case at Defenders special, Broken Blue Misconduct in the San Antonio Police Department. And for more on this and other misconduct cases, go to www.caseat.com slash broken blue. We've got a traffic alert to be aware of for next week. Crews are going to be working on new water and electrical improvements in the downtown area. And starting on Monday, San Saba Street will be closed at the intersection of Dolorosa. Eastbound lanes on Buena Vista will remain open. The work will run from Monday, January 13th to Wednesday the 15th.